Welcome again to the Next Up YouTube channel. So normally I talk about either Google and Stadia, and I'm going to continue to do that today. Um, and yeah, I really can't wait to get to today's topic because it's really going to be centered on something on Stadia. But first, I want to say thank you to those that do comment on my videos. I do read them. In fact, there was one comment that was 75% of my last video show wall and door. And I look back at it like, you know, that's a good point. So I'm constantly trying to improve, uh, trying to make best of the equipment I do have. You know, I do use my Pixel 3 XL as my camera of choice. I'm recording my audio through a Chromebook. And I, basically, I'll just take what I have to make it work. And I enjoy being able to use Google items such as that to do that. And with that said, and I'm using that as an excuse, I'm constantly trying to put out better content. So, yeah, if you guys do see anything that you're like, hey, this can improve or you can do that, feel free to comment. I'm not going to be offended or get upset about someone making a comment. Yeah, I do read those, and I take that to light. So before I get to my main topic, I want to do set some time aside uh, because today's video, I'm going to be honest with you, uh, I thought about uh, recording before, you know. Uh, it was really going to be centered on talking about other things. I wanted to actually do something talking about my new MacBook Pro I had. There was some other things going on, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be remiss if I did not discuss, you know, what we have going on in you know, our country right now. And look, I'm not going to make this a big topic. I'm not. Because I know for a lot of you guys out there, you know, you're aware of it. You know, uh, you've seen the news, especially if you're here in the States. So I'm not going to spend much time on it. In fact, I won't keep it simple. I want to just say, you know, uh, we're aware of what's going on. And I want to make sure I spend at least a couple of seconds before I start my video say, look, my thoughts and prayers are definitely with the family for what's going on with uh, George Floyd. This is not to be an indictment against all police because I actually have friends and family members who are police members or who are of the police force and uh, do great job or uh, do a good job of what they do. And to people like that that do do their job, uh, you know, flawlessly, they do deserve credit. But there are people who have been on the force or really any, any industry, but this in particular, who uh, this cop who uh, took this man's life, you know, is definitely uh, a bad cop and the other officers around him. You know, that would should have been a time of leadership where someone should have stepped up and pulled that officer off of him. Because, yeah, that was a, a poor procedure that was done and that should not have ever happened. And, you know, for a lot of us, we like this is not something that it's a one time thing. You have seen a number of situations where unarmed black men have been killed. And this is partially why there have been a lot of protests to bring light to that situation. And basically, this is. Part of my video is giving greetings to that, you know, um, to talk about that. Now, I know a lot of you like, look, this has been on my, you know, my news on my everywhere I go. They're talking about it and, you know, I'm trying to escape it. And look, I understand if you want to escape that. And in fact, once I get done with this topic, I'm going on to talk about that. But this is a reality and this do need some time to be discussed because yes, you know, we can't just sit there and gloss over it every time. Just, we can't just say, let's blow, let it blow over and let it go. And it's going to get better soon. Uh, there are some changes that need to take place. And, you know, it do start with the discussion. So I do challenge, you know, each of you out there to take the time to have that discussion with your coworker, with your neighbors, with your friends and be willing to listen and be willing to just take that time to try to maybe understand and hopefully through that we can start seeing change but with that said let's get to the topic at hand and basically it's in regard to take two and the reason why i am going to be discussing this topic has to do with the article that came out this weekend so i personally wanted to watch the video myself through zoom because i really wanted to see Basically, the context of it. And in regard to what I'm talking about, so if you're having to pay attention over the weekend or past couple of days, an article came out from a number of sources saying basically, uh, Take Two CEO, uh, Strauss Zinnick, you know, uh, basically stated that Google Stadia had overpromised on its technology. So, you know, that's basically what I want to comment on. But in order for me to really give it justice, I want to be fair and one linked the entire uh 
Zoom call so that you can see it yourself or listen to it yourself. Because for me to see and listen to it, I kind of got a better understanding where that was coming from. And I do want to have a discussion on that. So as a stadium, a person who picked up stadium myself, you know, um, this is something that I do think is kind of a good point that in a way he kind of do he kind of made. But I wonder if for a lot of people out there, if when it comes to stadia, you know, I think it really just depends on what you are looking for as far as this platform, because stadia do do a number of things very well. And let me start with some of the things that I, I say it do well. And I think a number of people who still gravitate to this platform or this gaming platform will say, you know, it does well. One, if you're someone who, you know, you just want to game. You don't want to deal with the downloads. You don't want to deal with the updates. You want to be able to pick up the controller and hit play and go. That's what it does well. And the other thing, to be able to play anywhere, whether it be in your living room or your big screen, on a number of computers, on your phone, mainly Android for right now, if it's a supported device, you can play it as long as you have the, the controller that supports it. And the last thing, it just, despite Google having some of its issues when it comes to, you know, where the platform is at, they actually are doing a pretty good job of branding games out there. Now, I think as far as what the, the CEO brought up that Google may have overpromised, oversold, I do get where he's coming from. And because at first, you know, when I read this article, I'm like, okay, you know, maybe, you know, do he have a, a little gripe to say? But I think when a lot of us saw Stadia, especially when they pitched it out there, did a video last year, people were getting excited. We were, we were so excited about Crowdplay. We were so excited about all these features. We were so excited about the graphics that promised that we were expecting to see. And, you know, out of the gate, you know, we were waiting for all that. And we didn't get it all. And so when you didn't see the 4K gaming, when you didn't see all of this that was promised, of course people going to be like, hey, where was all this that you promised? Where was this this game changer that you had said that we would get? And for a number of people, you know, they, they couldn't wait to jump all over that and say, this is why this doesn't work. Uh, Google over promise. Google didn't fulfill this. Google stated as a bust. It's all this and that. And look, to be fair, I'm not going to say I haven't been on that same uh bandwagon because I've made some videos in the past compared Google Stadia to GeForce Now and I did you know say there's some things that's all GeForce Now doing good that Stadia needed to improve on but as I continue to stick around with Stadia you know I'll begin to see man they are continuing to prove improve the gaming they're bringing more games in and it is a decent platform for gaming especially if you are someone like me who are uh, who are looking for a way to game without having a system. Now, I think this is something that he brought in, uh, uh, brought up on that Zoom call that I think really needs to be talked about um, very, very heavily. And because what he brought up, he was saying that, you know, the gamble that he felt Google Stadia or Google was making with Stadia was the fact that people are not or going to gravitate to them because they don't want to spend $300 for a gaming console. And this is where Stadia is going to be able to to basically come into the living rooms and take over. Because instead of spending $300 for a gaming platform or a console, you can jump on a Stadia right now. You know, now, the problem with that is this. First of all, for you to initially adopt Stadia, even though you wasn't spending $300 for a gaming console, you did have a pay back around, what's it, 150 give or take. I cannot remember how much I paid for the Stadia Founders Edition to jump on to the Founders Edition of Stadia. So that was that. Now, still not 300 bucks, but you still had to pay somewhat of an entry fee to get in there. Now, you can jump on it for free now, but you are missing some things if you jump on for free. Now, the other thing is that I think for a number of gamers out there, they already have their gaming platform. And I think he made that distinction already for a number of gamers that are gamers right now they already have a either pc uh they have a uh, a playstation 4 or an xbox so they already in there so you know this 300 dollars difference is what's going to be a different one way or another for them to jump on stadia and the really the people that i guess google was game uh, reaching for the gamers out there well for a lot of them i think a lot of them already made their choice 
And they were looking for something different. They were looking for something different from Google that any of the other gaming platforms didn't bring to the table. And the big thing right there, I think, for a number of people was crowd play. The fact that you can go on YouTube and just start playing with someone. And the fact that that was not made available pretty much out of the gate is going to be one of those things that I think is a big call for why a number of people look at Stadia and say, hey, man, it's not really doing what it's promised. As well as 4K gaming. I, I get that. But if I'm to be fair, you know, what the this whole criticism of Stadia, um, I will say this. For anyone who's been around Google, you know Google kind of have a, a, a tendency to work a little bit slow when it comes to their software. And if you continue on with the Zoom uh, call, he do kind of hint that he sees that there is some promise. Stadia, you got to be patient with it. Google have been always kind of like, I can say slow, but they have been slow when it comes to their software. You know, people expect to jump out there out of the gate and see Google just come in there and just, you know, go, you know, gangbusters. That's never been, or it have not really been Google style. You know, even with, with their Pixel phones, you know, they released a phone with all these promises. You're like, hey, man, where's all this that you promised? Like one big thing I would say about, you know, like the Pixel 4, to be able to use a number of features that we were wanting. You know, when you bought on opening day, some of those features were not there and it received some criticism for that. Now, after about a month, just a couple of months, you know, Google dropped a uh, of software update. It was actually a security bill and it had those features in there. So Google do promise things, but take a while to actually bring that forward. And again, if you're someone who bought this with that promise, I understand being upset if you bought an opening day expecting this thing to be ready now or when you bought it and it's still not available. Because if you look, we're coming on almost a year from when Stadia was announced and we still don't have some of the features that they promised. But if you are willing to overlook all that and look at what this can do, you will be excited about where it has come. You know, and when I first started playing Stadia, I remember the issues I had getting on in gaming and some of the bugs, the lack of games that was available. We're starting to see more games now. So they do have promise. And I think, again, you know, if you look at listen to the Zoom call, they see that there is some promise with cloud gaming in general. I think what his big thing was on that, what I got from the Zoom call was that people are going to buy my game, whether or our games one way or another, whether they buy through Stadia, whether they buy through Xbox, whether they buy through PlayStation. Basically, they're going to either buy our game one way or another, whether or not it's through the cloud or not, having a console or not, it's not going to be that the deciding factor. And as far as the, pe- the people buying Stadia, you know, it's not because they're saying, oh, I'm picking up Stadia because I'm not wanting to pick up a console or buy a console for 300 bucks. I don't think for a number of people that is the deciding factor. You know, some people, let's be honest, it is going to be the deciding factor. Some people do not want to spend that money on a console or do not have a console. Like I am someone who do not have a gaming console right now. This is pretty much my gaming console. And I, again, I enjoy being able to jump on there and play something like a Mortal Kombat. To play something like uh, Destiny or some other games like that. And like I said, some of these games I do have on my um, stadium behind me. You know, I have Red Dead Redemption. I wanted to check out Borderlands. I didn't get a chance to do that. You know, um, NBA 2K is also obviously available for there. So there are a number of games that has already obviously been released on a number of platforms as well as Stadia. And I'm pretty sure, we know, I didn't say pretty sure, but we know will be coming soon to Stadia. So, as far as whether or not this is something to take serious, you know, as far as like, should, should, if this is an article to, to point to say, see, I told you, there's another person saying Stadia, it's not working, Stadia sucks, you know, don't, you know, spend your money on Stadia. I did not get that. At all, I did not get that out of that interview. You know, I understand where people do feel like Stadia could have been much further along, or expected to be much further along. But this is a process; it really is. It just takes the time, or it takes time to get the software, and you got to look at what's 
the Google developers are dealing with. You know, you're dealing with someone being able to play a game through their server from all over the world and no lag, no issues whatsoever. Think about that. Like you're playing the game remotely from somewhere else. Like you hit a controller, you whatever input you're doing, it's not happening on your screen. It's not happening through a box. It's actually going all the way to a server and ping it back to you. And it needs to happen in real time. The fact that they've been able to do that <laughs> very well for a number of games with the display quality is an amazing feat. It really is. You know, I know a lot of people like, come on, you know, cloud gaming is not new. This is not, they're not the only one doing cloud gaming. There are a number of other companies out there doing it. I get it. I do. But when you look at the competition and where, when you look at the number of games that the Stadia team have and then the amount of time they've had, I mean, they have for less than a year. They have been out for less than a year. And you look at the number of titles they do have on their platform that is playable. That plays well <laughs> without just hiccuping and, and, and stopping that you can enjoy playing. And you compare that to other cloud gaming platforms. Even the video shield GeForce now, which I did have. If you look at how long they had to get their GeForce now together and you compare that to the time of Stadia, Google have in a less time been able to do or build up their platform to a very, very high standard. They have. And I know for a number of us out there or another fans, if we're to be fair, we know that there's still ways to go. There are things they still got to deal with. But I'm going to stick with them and I'm okay spending my money for the pro plan. And I have yet to, you know, cancel my plan yet because, you know, I'm still believing in Stadium for a little, about, a little bit while longer. Yeah, anyway, that's all I got. Yeah, I just want to kind of talk about that. That interview that I saw that popped up a lot of blogs this weekend kind of have given my take on it. Yes, I, I think he said pretty much what I think a lot of people have already said about Stadia. That, you know, we expected a certain thing when Stadia was announced. And because those things were not there, a number of people were disappointed. A lot of people, a number of people did express their disappointment. But for those, you know, people who are sticking around like myself, you know, those that are willing to be patient, we're starting to see it come along. It's slow, but it's coming along. And I do say to those, again, like I said in my last video, if you're looking at Stadia, if you want to know is Stadia for you, I challenge you to, you to ask you this question. You know, what do you want in the gaming system? What do you want in the gaming platform? And most importantly, do you have the ISP to be able to handle it? Because if you don't have the internet service provider that can allow you to play Games through the cloud pretty much however much you game without charging you an overage fee or without providing you the bandwidth, it's not going to be worth the money. It's not going to be worth the headache. Don't even bother going this route. You're probably better off going with the console. But if you do have the ISP, you do have the overall speeds that can handle that. And you're someone who just do not want to deal with download time. You do not want to deal with up upload times and you wanted to get in the game. You may be will be able to benefit from this. You may find yourself enjoying this. And just understand, as far as the number of games, they're building up their platform now. Do not come to the stadium and be like, hey man, it don't have the games that my PlayStation have. It don't have the games available for Xbox. It don't even have Madden yet, which imagine is coming. No coming that they're building their gaming platform, they're building slow. And if you're willing to understand that, if you're willing to be patient with it, jump on board. If you're like, man, I kind of want to wait and see, you know, I'm going to just kind of step back. Hey, I respect that and definitely do that. You know, it's better to do that than to come on board and get upset that you spent money on something. And, well, you didn't get what you expected because you didn't get a certain game that you wanted. Like for me, you know, I'm definitely wanting to check out Street Fighter Five. I know it's not going to be available for um, Stadia, that's somehow some miracle they uh, struck a deal with Capcom, you know. But I know if that's the case. If I'm like saying, "Hey, this to make a great thing for me to choose Stadia or not," then okay, then I should go somewhere else. Now, for me, that is not to make make a break thing. I'm not going to allow one game to be that decided factor. And as far as me, 
they did get the other game that was a big deciding factor for me, which was Madden. So since they got Madden coming, I'm good. Between Madden and Mortal Kombat, I'm set. I'm willing to kind of chill out for a little bit. Anyway, that's all I have. I'm curious your thoughts on the whole comment made. Do you feel that, hey, Stadia was a big disappointment? Like, did the, the Stadia crew overpromise so much and yet to fulfill? Or are you on the side of, look, I'm willing to stick around and be patient for it. Thank you again for joining me. Have a good day. I'm out.